to you now, Jenny. Great, thank you very much. And I hope you can hear me okay. So my name is Jenny Rose and I'm a lecturer here at the Alliance of Manchester Business School. But before I go into the how you teach accounting to Generation Greta, I want to talk about the reason why. Um, and there's a really straightforward reason why, and it's because this is the issue that our students most care about. Um, so there's a new uh, global survey um, that was recently released by the, and reported on by the BBC, saying that 45% of those questioned said feelings about climate affected their daily lives. It's a, a really current issue that students care about. 65% of the respondents in the same survey um, said that they are worried or very worried about climate change. And we've never had such an issue that so many of the people that we are teaching care about. So it's absolutely vital that we capitalise that and we use that. And actually, I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, to link the climate change issues into accounting. And the students that I've brought along today with me will also be explaining how they found that it, it linked in those initial accounting uh, teaching that I've been doing with them. It's also quite a gift of a subject to link to because there is constantly new news about it. So I can do the fantastic thing that I love to do is to walk in with the, the newspaper of the day and to uh, link what I'm teaching about to an article. So at the bottom, you can see an article in the Financial Times just today um, from the IAEA saying that clean energy must triple to curb climate change. Now, sp if spending's tripling, that directly affects the accounts and I can talk about that straight away. So the reason why I think this is so important is because it's so easy to do and it's such an important issue for so many of our students. It's quite different to when I, I qualified. So this is me uh, about 13 years ago when I qualified as an accountant. And um, I was quite into sustainability then, but it was quite a fringe part of the auditing team. Uh, there was only one guy that I can remember who worked on sustainability audits. But I was quite into uh, climate change and social justice and corporate social responsibility. And you can see the picture on the left, there on the right, sorry, was me um, in Mexico. I won a, a trip to fly to Mexico to help the locals recycle and to help count the birds. Um, and it was a, a brilliant trip uh, where I was uh, doing ecological saving by day and then uh, drinking tequila by night. And it was, I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure that Greta would really have seen it as something that was um, important mm -hmm. and worthwhile doing and if it really did make a difference. Um, but the, the current students that I'm teaching are so different. Um, they're really inspired by people like Greta Thunberg. Uh, they can see that Greta's talking at places like the World Economic Forum. They're talking about that corporate responsibility, the co talking about keeping corporations accountable for their actions. And so that directly comes into auditing. And I use her films and I use um, pictures like this just to try and bring out some of the messages that Paolo was just talking about, about saying accounting can save the world. Um, so and I'm hoping that the people that I'm talking to will be those people that will be rising to the top by 2050 when a lot of the, the promises that uh, corporations have made um, run out, when that deadline runns out for things like carbon neutrality or um, specific actions that they've promised to take. And those that I'm teaching now will be those that are right at the top of organisations in the future um, to really make a difference. And as I'm teaching about accounting to save the world, my job is made very easy um, by researchers like Jonathan, who's spoken to this morning, and Paolo, who came on just in the last hour. And I can talk easily about his paper that he's just released, and we're at the cutting edge of, of research. I can explain the income statement uh, as it currently is, but I, then I can start to explore the value-added income statement that Paolo uh, talks about in his research. His paper is quite accessible to students, and I can talk about that uh, wealth created and the wealth distributed and another way of looking at things. And therefore our students are not just learning how things happen or what they need to do, but also able to think about that wider picture and um, how things could be different and how things could be better. And that's what I try and do with the students. I don't want them just to work out what's going on. I want to think about how things could be. And, Ideas like this are very simple to teach in class, but can really push that critical thinking, that original thinking applied to a new level. 
It's also made quite easy because a lot of the, the regulators and the uh, professional bodies are involved. So the Financial Reporting uh, Council talks a lot about ESG challenges. Um, the ICAEW, the Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, talks a lot of, about the role of accountancy profession. And the international financial reporting standards that I teach in class have also got a whole a host of material on uh, sustainability related disclosures. So students don't just learn what's happening at the moment, but they're actually riding that wave as to what's going to come next. And when they're out in the back into the world of work and they're leading change and they're leading um, the how the financial reports are put together, they're actually aware of what's going on. So that makes it easy. And then the final thing that makes it easy is um, that it's the perfect framework. Um, all my students know that I talk a lot about paper straws and my frustrations with paper straws. Um, because I often, I, well, I have small children that chew through paper straws very easily. And I see paper straws wrapped in plastic and I see paper straws not being recycled. Um, so being able to, to put a value on the uh, paper straws and to measure it, you can start to see those kind of trade-offs for climate change, whether it's worth um, converting to paper straws or whether the plastic straws actually have less of an impact on the environment. And putting a monetary value on that, you can more easily work out that trade-off as whether it's worth converting to paper straws or not. And double entry bookkeeping lends itself perfectly to net zero accounting, where you've got a dual effect where something comes in and something goes out. So actually, some, even the nuts and bolts that I teach about financial reporting relates to um, the net zero accounting and carbon accounting. One other element that really helps and that I talk about in class, both undergraduate classes and at MBA level, is I use um, example case studies. And one that I've used a lot this year is International Airlines Group. And they have a lot in there about sustainability and their flight path and net zero. And I can pull on all the different elements that they've published in their financial reports to relate that back to the importance of sustainability and explaining that to stakeholders, while still linking it back to the ideas of of power. So this is what it is at the moment, but the idea of what it could be in the future and how it's going to change. It links into when I teach about auditing as well. I talk a lot about is the world broken? Is there a crisis in trust and the role the auditors can play in uh, confidence that businesses uh, need at the moment? I set essays on it and I was really pleased with this undergraduate essay that I set um, just last week about applying the financial reporting characteristics to sustainability reporting. So I'm not testing that they've been listening in class and can write down what I've told them, but can they apply that to a new area? And it translates really well in that way. But what I want you to, what I want to move on to talk about is about the MBA teaching that I've been doing. And these are the MBA students that I've brought along. And this was a survey that I put right at the beginning of the class. And it was asking, do you think accounting has a role in climate change and social justice? Um, and this was before I'd even started talking about Paolo and the role and double entry bookkeeping related to carbon zero. Before it even got into that, MBA students were telling me that most of them think it has a role. And therefore, as a teacher um, in accounting, that we need to make sure that we capitalize on that. So that was the, the main points that I wanted to share with you. And then I'm really looking forward to hearing from the MBA candidates about uh, their experiences of that. Okay, thanks Jenny. Can you see me? Hopefully you can. Yeah, you can, okay. So um, I'm Jim Pendrell, I'm Research Communications Lead uh, at Alliance Manchester Business School. Uh, so I've worked with, with Jenny over many years and uh, uh, I'm going to chair the discussion over the next uh, gosh, 50 minutes or so um, uh, and introduce you all to the students, etc. So just before we do that, um, Jenny, I just wanted to, we didn't touch on your, your own background, the fact that you, you're you actually a you know, qualified accountant yourself. And just, just to briefly tell us you know, how important that is, because you, you, you've been in the industry yourself, haven't you? And so you've, you made the transition to academia. Just tell us a little bit about, about that, your own journey. Yeah, so it was 13 years ago that I qualified, which sounds like quite a long time ago. And I would say at that point that sustainability and climate change were really quite fringe in the professional world that I was living in. As I said, there was one person that did these sustainability audits. And I did, um, I was quite passionate about it all the way, all the bit that it was a bit misdirected and it was more like enjoyable flights to Mexico and Africa. But um, 
I did care about it and I was trying to see how I could explore it but I just found that um it was teaching and inspiring other people that I found that was really enjoyable for me so I moved out of practice I moved into um teaching and then I've been at the university for uh, six years now um, and I'm starting to see as the increasing awareness becomes of climate change and how students care about it so more that the old examples just don't work anymore. So 10 years ago, when I started talking about accounting, it was um, I set problems like your uh, parents give you £100 to start a business. Where does that go in the accounting equation? How do we account for that? And that's just not interesting to students. Whereas if I can talk about a company wants to go carbon neutral, and they want uh, an airline wants to change the fuel that they use what does that affect in the accounts suddenly that's much more engaging so having come from industry and having seen um how accounting works in industry and then seeing how that teaching of accounting has changed over the last 10 years i think it's more important than ever to make sure that we are addressing this through accounting and i think this shows how easy it is to do that Super, super. Well, without any further ado, let's introduce the students who've uh, very kindly given up their time to, to join us today. Um, uh, let me, I'm, I'm going to ask them to, to introduce themselves briefly. Um, just I guess going to tell us a little bit about their, their background, what attracted them to doing the MBA and to coming to Manchester, but also you know, how important climate change and sustainability issues are to them and actually that, how important it is that they are embedded in the teaching. So just if I'm going to go, go around the room, as it were, uh, and just ask each of our students just to say a few words about, about, about that. So I'll, I'll start with Nikem. Nikem, do you want to start? I think you're not on mute. I think you're okay. Can we hear you? I'm muted again. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, so my name is Nikem Igwe. I'm from Nigeria. I'm a chartered accountant. I've been a chartered accountant for over five years. I started my career in KPMG Nigeria in the audit division where I audited um, oil and gas companies, majorly energy companies. Yeah, and I, I spent about six years plus in KPMG. And then I moved to PZ where I worked as the internal audit manager and later on the head of budgeting and financial planning. My last role before moving to AMBS was as the chief accountant of Perfective and Mail Nigeria. Um, what attracted me to AMBS? I would say a lot of things, but um, majorly because AMBS spoke to some of my major interests. I had interests in sustainability, and I also had interests in broadening my mind and my scope. I had gotten a bit bored in my role, and I wanted to see the world from a different perspective. And their um, emphasis on original thinking was something that really got my attention. And also they had a very good reputation with um, sustainability. I could see from the um, highlights that were made by the Chartered Association of Business Schools on their commitment. So, um, and another thing that also um, impressed me about the school was that they weren't just saying it, they were doing it. So um, they had included it in their strategy you know, which is not something which is not, which is not very common, and uh, they had also made investments in terms of the launch of the new decarbonization research and innovation center. So, um, yeah, those were the things that attracted me to Manchester, and of course, it's like a family school. All my brothers had come here before, and had good reviews as well. So, in terms of the second second part of my question there around the camp, you know, how important climate change and sustainability are to you, and how important that they're embedded in in the teaching just briefly on that yes so um i have seen it so in most of our classes you see um for instance in in jenny's class normally people talk about sustainability as just one small aspect it's usually like the side attraction or the side piece but with jenny she has found a way to weave it through every aspect of the financial statement so you're looking at the pnl and a part of me feels it's incomplete now because I feel like we haven't accounted for nature to put it in her words. So um, it it's, has struck a new um, interest in me. I've, I can now look at sustainability from every angle. In, even in the class we had yesterday, the um, financialization class with um, Dr. 
Umar. So he was, he spoke about how companies, investors are not looking for how well you are, you are investing in, in sustainability or how much you care about that before they invest. Um, and when you read articles online, you hear that um, you see small surveys where um, people, AMBS candidates are saying, I wouldn't work for a company that doesn't care about sustainability. So it's the University of Manchester is, you can see that you're consciously bringing it into every aspect of work that we do, you know, from in different subjects, not just financial um, accounting. And it's something that even with the entrepreneurship as well, I have looked at some um, articles and some things that people have discussed on looking for ways to um, um, set up businesses surrounding and um, sustainability and ability to measure some of these um, um, reports that are coming out. Thanks again, That's, uh, that was ex excellent. Um, Hassan, let's, get, let's go to you. Just tell us again, you know, um, a little bit about your own background and what attracted you to Manchester. And again, how important you know, these issues are to you, climate change, and sustainability, and in terms of actually also being embedded in the you know, teaching. First, my name is Hassan Ahmad. I'm a certified management accountant. Uh, I used to work as a financial controller in a group named uh, Webcor Group in Angola. Uh, most of my experience was within the food manufacturing division, and my last role was financial controller in a company named Grandish Washington to Angola that produced wheat flour. So basically, we're importing uh, wheat and producing wheat flour and selling in the Angola market and exporting bran uh, outside of Angola. Uh, during my work, um, most of the time we were concentrating on uh, concentrating on the traditional way of thinking about the accounting. What was matter uh, the most is the bottom line, and I wasn't able to see how I can articulate this. To the, to the climate change and what we can do as an accounting, and the accountant with that. And uh, like the environment was always uh, be one of my interests, but I wasn't able to see the link before. Uh, now, as I started my MBA in life machine school, I start seeing the impact that me as an accountant, I can do on the on the environment and on the future of this planet. Like um, before, I was thinking that I have to be like a biologist or someone who studied some science to have this impact. Now I know that even if I'm dealing with numbers, I can make an impact on this planet and make it a better place. Uh, I think. Um, I, I missed the, <clears throat> the idea to explain how, how did I uh, decided to pursue an MBA. During my work, like <clears throat> I ranked uh, inside of the company until I reached uh, the financial uh, controller uh, position. And after like four or five years of working in this position, I start feeling that um, the work is a little bit boring because we were finished the investment phase and uh, most of the work was operational <clears throat> and everything was implemented. So I took the decision that I need to, to pursue new horizons, let's say open new opportunities for myself. And during my researches, I encountered like a life management for business school. And <coughs> sorry. And um, I was able to see uh, the opportunity of joining this amazing place. And since my arrival and the start of the program till now, like every day I'm discovering something new, new way of thinking. Uh, like uh, we are dealing with the, with the world issues or with the new world issues, let's say in a different, way than the traditional way and this where we are let's say like thinking out of the box and this what can open new horizon maybe to the, to the entire humanity uh, it's, it's allowing us to explore new new territory that we didn't think that we will explore it before and, 
And this is amazing, to be honest. I'm so happy <laughs> yeah. to have this opportunity to do this here yeah. with you guys. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's very, 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 very well put there. I don't know how we can follow that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. um, maybe maybe Sean can actually. So uh, thanks, Hassan. We'll come back to you later, later, shortly. Uh, Sean, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, likewise why this is all important to you as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Sean Lee. I'm an environmental scientist. So for the past six years, I've been working in an engineering consultancy. Um, so I've got experience of transport as well. Um, but more recently, I've kind of been working specifically in the water environment. So focusing on rivers and um, how to restore them, how to protect them, how to kind of introduce more nature based solutions to infrastructure development. Um, so I chose the MBA because I'm currently quite technical. I was analyzing lab reports and um, working with different teams within the engineering sector and thought that actually uh, kind of environmental issues and sustainability is really, really important. And I need my clients to take it more seriously. And if I want them to take it more seriously, I'm probably going to need to have that business kind of advisory skill set. So um, be able to show them how I understand how it's going to impact finances and um, how there's kind of reputational issues associated with it, uh, the different marketing opportunities. So kind of uh, I thought undertaking an MBA will allow me to kind of have better influence with clients in taking sustainability more seriously. Um, so I chose Manchester specifically because it's the top rated uh, MBA school in the UK for uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainability. So I thought that's perfect. I'm going to get that business experience, but there's still going to be a focus on kind of uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainability. So I think I didn't really know what that meant. I wasn't entirely sure how they were going to integrate the two. So um, I think we've just undertaken our first month of the MBA and I'm quite surprised to see it pop up in not one, but kind of all of my modules so far. Wasn't really expecting it in accounting as well, um, but I'm really pleased that it's popped up. I think it's going to be a really important thing for um, accountants to take seriously and to now value nature um, and kind of have it as something more tangible. Um, so that clients can start to take it more seriously. Mm. That's, you know, that's a really interesting point, Sean, because you, as Hassan said there, you know, there was a, a wrong perception that you, to change the world, to change the planet, you've got to be a biologist or a scientist, etc. Or, you know, uh, accounting, you know, for many people wouldn't come into that sort of thinking, would it? And, and, and further to the <clears throat> previous session we ran with Professor Quattrone, looked at exactly the same point actually that this is something yes accounting has a role to play here um sean is that, is that, is that what you sort of a feeling finding yourself in the, in the early stage of your, your course yeah definitely so um in the environmental sector we're currently starting to well not starting i guess for a while we've been trying to value nature and the different kind of services that it provides so i guess in hassan's instance it will be wheat production so can we put a value on nature because it can produce that wheat for us um but it's a really difficult thing to value and people have different methodologies of going about it and we need one clear consistent approach that all different companies are using so that it's comparable, that it's verifiable. And I think that accounting is a good way to help us do that because there seems to be a lot more consistency. There's legislation, there's policies, there's standards um, that all companies are bound by. And I, I really think that that's something that we need for um, sustainability so we can show our clients just what they're getting from nature. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jenny, I asked Paolo the same question in the previous session about uh, whether the, these ideas were gaining traction. Uh, you probably heard his reply. What do, what, do you, what do you think about it? This because it's just sort of core, isn't it? This, this discussion really are, are these ideas beginning to get traction in, in industry, organisations, etc. Yeah, I really think that they are. And 
I listened to Jonathan this morning talking about the um, we've had Gore and now we've got Greta. Is it just a phase and is it going to be too interrupted by um, the pressures from the pandemic? But I do think it's quite different. Um, there's never been 10 million people on the streets inspired by a young person like Greta. And um, it's one of the top three worries that current students have. So the other worries were around being able to connect and that they're worried that they've missed out on education. But number three is social justice and climate change. And that is huge and um, much bigger than when I certainly when I was a student and certainly um, in the time after that, when I was trying to um, fly into Mexico to do some recycling. And clearly now I can see that wouldn't make much of a difference. But at the time, I felt like it was quite uh, really doing something. So I think the, the new generation of students is is different and they're really excited about this. And it's fantastic that two of these students here are like accountants. So they've seen accountancy before and Sean hadn't seen accountancy at all before, but she has heard of the, the environmental side or the, the climate change part of it. So it actually draws in um, students, no matter what their background is, are suddenly really engaged in this and in getting involved in, and see as soon as they see those links, it starts to be quite exciting. And mm. accounting comes from being maybe that boring bookkeeping subject to something they see headlines about every single day. Yeah. In fact, Sean, you said, didn't you, that uh, you were surprised how embedded it was in across different modules. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a key point here, isn't it, Sean, that, that, that it is across all areas of your study. Yeah, exactly. So um, yesterday, one of our modules was, um, I try to remember which one it was. One of our modules, yes, um, okay. we were talking about the different <laughs> financial markets um, and how it kind of comes into that, you know, people are starting to take their ESG commitments more seriously. They're looking at ways to kind of improve their ESG score. Um, one of our marketing lectures, it was talking about um, how companies really want to promote what they're doing um, for their reputation, as well as kind of I think their conscience as well, really. So yeah, I think it's filtered down into all of our different modules. Mm. Nikem, again, same question perhaps to you. Were you, were you surprised how embedded uh, these, 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 uh, uh, this thinking is, is in these various, your various modules and subjects? Yes, yes. So the model you were trying to remember was the leadership <laughs> in <laughs> leadership in a changing environment, and it, it was I, I was very surprised to see how sustainability came up and it was a really you know big deal now in leadership because all companies are now held accountable for how they are impacting the environment positively and then we have um situations as i said earlier on where investors are also looking at that so it's not just about your profits and it's so powerful because there is now a struggle between are we not here to make profits or are we here to do good? And a lot of people are leaning towards, we can make profits and do good. And then we're seeing um, small um, write-ups and papers on how people have been able to achieve this. And I feel like any professional who joins a company and is able to do this is a star. Um, I also would say that as an accountant, you know, after, um, the couple of classes we've had this past few weeks, I feel like we're part of the defenders of the universe now because from the audit perspective, when you go and look at what people are reporting as their sustainability impacts, you are checking to see that this is true. And if, it's, if, this, if, if this is wrong, it has a huge impact on the reputation of that company. And we know how some of some some incidences like this have happened in the past with um, big companies that have had to do a lot of damage control. So in, invariably, we're protecting Mother Earth. So we're like superheroes. <laughs> Hassan, I have the same question to you really about the extent to which these concepts are embedded in, in the modules. Have you been surprised by just how you know, embedded they are across different parts of the course. Actually, to be honest, like um, I was surprised in the accounting course itself uh, first because, like, it was our first contact with how the the accounting is affecting. <laughs> sorry, the environment. Uh, it was like the first time that we I'm exposed to this. So it was the biggest surprise. But to be honest, I was a little bit expecting that this will appear in other modules. 
And yesterday, uh, in the model named exactly leading and manage, managing in a global environment, um, the doctor Ismael was uh, emphasizing how um, some companies, or let's say some countries that are not taking in consideration the environment uh, effect of their action are facing issues in, um, <coughs> in receiving funds and investment. And also this is another amazing aspect to look at the, um, at the how can I say, it? to look at the situation. Let's say yesterday we, we went through uh, Tesla and when they bought Bitcoin and we had this discussion like we know that Tesla should be a green company but at the same time they are buying Bitcoin that uh, requires a lot of energy to to mine so this, this discussion itself like it's how can I say it? it's very rich uh, um, it makes us really think and <coughs> Person, and this is my point of view. Like, if we care about the environment, we are thinking strategically. Because at the end of the day, we inherited this this planet from our ancestors, and we have to leave it to our descendants after us. And if we don't care about the environment, they will not have a planet, and they will not have resources to live from. Even us, maybe. <laughs> We will find ourselves like short of resources because we are not taking care about the, the environment. At the end of the day, if we are uh, responsible about the environment, we are creating long term uh, profit, let's say, for ourselves and that will make us survive. If we don't care about the environment, maybe we will make lots of money now if we want like, to just speak about. Sometimes they say, uh, and we say in accounting and finance, like time is money and the time value of money and receiving pound today is better than receiving five, five days from now. Okay, if I will go and <coughs> cut all the fees to sell uh, lumber and earn money today, in financial side, it's fine. Uh, it's a good thing to be done because I will earn all my money today. But if I do it, I will not have any source of income like 20 days, uh, sorry, 20 years from now. So the point is, maybe we can start emphasizing the point is when you are taking the environment into consideration, you are creating long term and sustainable profit. And this is more important than having all your money to, today but you will not have, uh, let's say, clean, <coughs> clean air to breathe, or you will not have a good planet to live in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, something I wanted to talk about <coughs> was, was how the yeah. course will help you in your future career. And then just, Jenny, just, Jenny, just on this point, I mean, I'm intrigued by the extent to which will the students here, the leaders, business leaders of tomorrow, how, how to what extent will they drive this and lead the change and lead the change of in industries or in particular organizations or what is the role here of the regulators of governments etc is it the case that you know ultimately people in this room on, on this call are those who are actually going to influence this far more than any government i think that's a really good point and the regulators definitely do have a role in this and i think they are taking it quite seriously so when I talk about links to the Financial Reporting Council and what they're issuing and the international financial uh, standards, they're also issuing their response to this. So the regulators do have a role. Um, but as Paolo was talking about, um, it's not always just about measuring. It's about what's really happening underneath and what the company is really doing. And I'm so inspired by hearing the passion. These three students were just um, chosen almost at random from my class. Um, but this is a, a, a really good sample of you can hear the passion and you can hear the um absolute change in focus for this 
this generation of students compared to previous so that's what inspires me to think that this generation in a few years time when these guys are leading boards and that they're making a real difference that whatever the regulators say these are going to be the ones making the decisions about what's disclosed and what the companies actually do um seeing their inspiration and been able to translate that into action by telling them how um the climate change issues are affecting the income statement and the uh, financial statements I think is really hopeful and it's exciting to the future. Mm -hmm. Another question I had for all, all the students on, on this call was, you know, as Jenny says there, how you think what you're learning now will influence you in your own career. I think you've put a part answer to it in, in many of you, but uh, Sean, back, 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 back to you. I mean, how do you feel? I know it's early days, but how do you think it'll you know, help you in your own career? I think, um, I already want to stay in this field. So I think it's been really useful for me personally, as well as everybody else to understand how <laughs> sustainability fits into so many different elements of business and how now it can't be kind of set aside as a like, we need to tick this box. It, people now realize that it has to infiltrate all areas of business. It needs to be part of strategy. It needs to be part of operations and that it's not something that um, they can just kind of do on the side. It needs to be a really integral part of the business, like Hassan was saying, for sustainability in terms of profits, operations, everything like that going forward. And I think it's great that it's uh, kind of infiltrated into all parts of the course so we understand how it affects all areas of business. But everybody in the class is probably going to go on to very different companies. So they then take that learning back with them and apply it. Um, so hopefully we'll, as time goes on, we'll have a big shift of companies having a more well-rounded, sustainable approach to business. Mm. And Kim, would you agree with, with that? Yes, I agree with her. So our cohorts uh, we have uh, people from about 30 different countries from all over the world in one place and we are going through models that talk about leadership it talks about marketing strategy talks about accounting and finance and in all of this there is one consistent thing that is there and that's sustainability so this is an excellent breeding, breeding ground for bringing up a next type or next quality of business leaders all over the world because a lot of people are going to go back to your countries a lot of people are going to go to different countries some people will stay here and we're all living with this knowledge of this is the way that we should go in terms of this is what we're all it's not even forced on us the passion is just going to come naturally and it's uh, you also live with very good skills because to drive sustainability not just the reporting but actually the action and results takes a lot of change management and those are very very good skills for leadership roles in, in careers so i think it's a it's a very good addition to any career driven person and it's preparing you for the future because as you rightly said in 2030 2050 when all these plans are coming to fruition who are the people going to be in leadership even if we're too old we would have mentored people who would then take it to the next level. Mm. Yes, you know, I, I, I was really touched by Jenny's point there about the promises until 2050, which might sound a long way off, but it's not really that far off. Uh, yeah, it was for a time when 2020 seemed a long way off to, to me, and it, it's been and gone now. But yeah, that, that and I, I, I'm, I'm presuming Hassan, you agree completely with what Deb just said there. Regards, yes, you know this, the fact you can apply it to whatever sector, whatever industry you, you're in. Yeah. Exactly, I agree with the, with every single point my colleagues mentioned. And um, like, I think um, the sustainable thinking should be included to one of the principles of the accountants, <clears throat> along with confidentiality and other things. <clears throat> it should be given the same uh, Wait, let's say, and <coughs> sorry. And uh, regarding myself, like from now on, now I'm a student. Right? Uh, once I finish my MBA, I will uh, become an employee again, or I will start my own business. I didn't decide yet. 
but uh, my my way of thinking has started to change already and uh, for sure when I will apply to a company I will take in consideration their impact to the environment and imagine like personally speaking if I get like two job offers from two companies one care more than the other about the environment for sure I will accept working with a company that cares about the environment or mm. if I get accepted in a leadership role in a company that they don't emphasize this point I will be the one imposing measures and uh, and rules there to take the environment into consideration. Yeah. And as uh, Jennifer said, like we we are the future uh, leaders of this world and all the organizations. So it's very important to plant this seed inside of our mind or inside of our way of thinking because this is what will change the world and the future. And uh, we will. We, we should try our best to, to achieve that in order to, <coughs> how can I say it, leave the planet in a shape better than, than what we receive it. Mm. We, we, we've um, I, I, I omitted to mention that we've opened a chat for, for questions for this session and uh, we've had a few already. And do, if you're listening in, please do, you know, if you have a question for anybody on our panel, uh, do please put it in the chat or Q&A function and we'll, we can ask ask it. There's a question actually, it's probably, probably for Jenny actually that's come in, Jenny. You, you might just see it there on the screen from Mohammed saying, you know, what messages do you find are the most effective in communicating the importance of sustainability to businesses? Um, uh, also, is it more about the long-term potential profit or more about the social importance? Uh, yeah, perhaps one for you, Jenny, there, that, that question. Yeah, I think uh, both are important and it depends on the even the individuals that are on the board as to whether um, to go more down the potential profit route or that kind of social responsibility. But I think the point that Hassan just made about how he would choose an, choose an employer is really important um, because increasingly this generation are really aware that they want to choose a company that takes climate change and sustainability quite seriously. Um, and through teaching students about how to read financial reports, they can start to understand where companies are greenwashing or uh, making vague commitments compared to those companies that are actually genuinely making a difference in climate change. And that difference between um, saying that you're going to do something or making a general comment and the specifics of what they're actually going to do, if um, em potential employees are able to spot that, then they can... Uh, make a more informed decision about the, the employees that they're going to. So it's not just about profitability or social importance, it's also about getting the best employees as well. And I think that's quite a powerful argument to use. And, and a Simon, actually, these guys are working on for me at the moment is about analysing some financial statements from an, an employee point of view. So as they're going to work for new companies, they can start to understand what's been published in the financial statements, what that means and make a decision about employment based on financial reporting and financial statements. And that includes that sustainability angle and what they're really doing uh, for climate change. So I think you're right, it does include profit or social importance, but also if they want the best employees and they want the best people in the future, they need to be quite serious about um, doing this transparently and effectively. Mm -hmm. Another question, or really, well, more, I guess, a statement really, and that's like, uh, uh, a note in chat and it's about something you hear quite a bit about it's actually the, the generation gret has been somehow infantilized uh, you know environmental issues are seen as those that only children are worried about um that says that you know once you grow up actually you must be realistic and leave environmental issues alone um i'm guessing that jenny from what that comment there is about that it isn't just the generation greta is not not is not a ch issue for children is it i mean that's i think the point that's being made there yeah, I love the point and how Basak's explained it as well. Um, I think if if in, if people think that Generation Greta infantilising the issues of children, when these guys are going to hit their boards in a few years' time, I think they're going to get a bit of a shock because this is not a temporary avoiding school on a Friday thing. You can hear the passion in their voices and you can hear how they're committed to genuine, genuinely showing this. They're going to choose companies that are generally doing this or they're going to change companies that are not. And that impact is potentially very huge. And so as teachers, as we're teaching um, this generation, 
it's trying to use those issues and explain how that relates to financial accounting and all the other areas that we're looking into but it's really using the energy and that passion and that genuine desire and that genuine anxiety um, to create interest in your subject but also show how these students in the future can make a difference it's not just the MBA I have, I have 650 undergraduates that I teach um, accounting to and I'm giving them the same kind of things the same message of how accountants can change the world if it's the right accountant um, and the accountant who truly cares about making a difference Mm. Just wonder with the students with us here, that point about the Generation Greta and these sort of these labels. I don't know if you have a view on that as well. You know, is it is it time to perhaps change that 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 narrative a little bit? Um, I don't know if anyone any of you have a, a view on that. I can't sure. say that's necessarily been my experience, but I may be slightly in an environmental bubble where a lot of the people that I work with do obviously think that the environment is really important and it's something that we need to implement into all different areas of business. But I mean, at the same time, it is a good point that children are much more aware. My younger brothers, they're very queued up on all of this and they're like, kind of in Jenny's words, anxious about it. Like they know that we really do need to start doing something. And I think we've already started to see the kind of responses to climate change or the flooding that we've experienced or the like infrequent events with, you know, excessive rainfall and drought and how we're impacting developing countries, even though the developed countries are the ones that are actually causing all of the issues. I think that actually the younger generation are probably much more informed on this than maybe some of the older generations, maybe as a result of kind of better understanding of it or the recording that we've been doing is a lot more detailed. We have a lot more, you know, access to the internet and things like that. But I don't think that it's still necessarily restricted to just the younger generations. I think it's something that older generations are now more aware of and are starting to do more about. Mm. Mm. And, that, and that's a quite a shift, isn't it? I, I'm surmising there that, you know, in terms of what, what's happening, it seems to be happening, accelerating, if anything. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that's change of thinking. Yeah, yeah. The, the others want to come, come in on that point or do you agree with Sean? Sean? Sorry, was that for me? Oh, no, no, it's more for um, Hassan and um, <laughs> Ken, if they sort of, do they agree with you on that point or are they see? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I, I completely agree with, um, um, Sean, I can see where um, Basan is where Basak is coming from, but I don't think it's it's uh, will I say childish. Um, you're seeing a lot more pushback now because the this generation has more energy. This generation hasn't yet been consumed by the process of life and you know getting older and all of that. So the energy would come from here, and this generation is looking to their future. We have so many more, much more years to live than the older generation. And if you're seeing the, the earth deteriorating at this pace, then you better do something about it because the older generation might not be as worried because they might not be here to meet the final impacts. <laughs> it's not mm. to sound harsh, right? So it's only natural that the younger people would be more affected by this and be more passionate and would have more incentive to do something about it. So I don't think when we get older, our focus would then be on profits or, or management and accounting. I think it's going to continue with this. Okay, this, these series of events that have been held this week by university obviously is designed to turn cyber cop, which comes up in literally a couple of weeks now, not far off. I'm, I'm just interested actually uh, for your views on COP actually, um, all of you, you know, given what we've just been talking about in the last half an hour or so, um, do you, do you think it can, I just wonder what you think, do you think it can achieve sort of the, 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 the change that's required? Uh, are these, you know, what are you, are you, are you a bit quite cynical about it in terms of actually, it's just a talking shop or something it is? Uh, I mean, we had a session this morning with Jonathan Pinsker here at the school and he was talking about, you know, um, uh, what, what COP could achieve, you know, and it's, he was saying it might be quite boring things this time around. It could be sort of just working out, working out what each country needs to do in terms of its own national targets, etc., rather than a you know, headline sort of reduction in CO two. I just just wondered what um, what your, your views were on COP. 
And um, I think I think Jonathan put it really well today when he said that it's like James Bond. So there's nothing been nothing <laughs> yeah. for two years, and therefore yeah. this feels like a really exciting event. Um, I think it feels like there's a lot more energy for it this year, um, and I think increasingly as. Generation Greta is um, seen as quite a derogatory term, but I don't think it is at all. And I think it's um, a generation of people that genuinely really care about this. And I think that the students that I'm teaching will want to know what comes out of COP26, what um, promises have been made and how we can hold um, organisations responsible for that. And it's that accountability that comes through in the financial reporting. So it's going to be fantastic as we see the headlines come out and the uh, things that are going to change and consider the financial reporting implications of that. So for me, I'm very excited because it's going to give me so much that I can use directly in my, uh, my, in my classes. It's live and it's happening and it's, I can link it into how it's going to change the financial statements in whatever way. And, uh, and therefore, it's a really exciting way of teaching that feels at the edge of what's happening. So I'm quite excited about it. Whether it will make a real difference, only time will tell. So um, but, but, not... but, it's, but it's raising awareness of the issues, isn't it? I suppose, you know, and, and it's put purist as an event. It actually yeah. does, everyone in the world kind of knows about it, knows what's yeah. going on, doesn't it? So they, it's creating its own uh, its own uh, interest. Uh, what, what, do this, what do our students think? I think it's going to be a really interesting one um, because of COVID. I think there's all these other considerations that we need to factor in, kind of how we're kind of what our post COVID world is going to look like and how we need to account for that, what it's going to mean. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see whether um, that's kind of reflected in the discussions and the different actions that are put in place. Um, I also think it'll be really interesting to see um, what has been done so far so kind of reviewing since the last cop what um the parties have actually managed to achieve um again kind of holding them accountable to the promises that they made but also in terms of going forward i think it's going to be interesting to understand you know when they commit to certain things actually how they're going to do it how they're going to implement it because i don't i, I fear that if we don't have that detail um there's going to be a lot that's said with actually very little explanation of how they're going to, without, with little explanation of how they're going to get there. Mm. So I think that's what I'm interested by this time. And that passion for detail and accountability, a lot of that comes through um, the students are wanting now. They want to know how we're going to hold the um, leaders accountable for this. And I think that's quite new. So when I was, again, when I was a student and I was doing these trips and finding out about headlines, I never really thought in that way of holding individuals accountable, holding leaders and holding corporations accountable. But actually financial report, that's exactly what accounts do. It's exactly what financial reports do. And so, um, yeah, that passion for accountability comes right through in, in financial reporting. Hmm. Kim, has Sanjay have any thoughts on COP or do you, do you, do you agree? I've not what, taught it yet, I've not taught it yet. <laughs> you know, to, okay, maybe, maybe you need to wait, come back and ask you that question at the end of October once, <laughs> once the, yeah, the whole event's over. But uh, yeah, and it, uh, once Jenny sort of streamed live various uh, uh, sessions to you <laughs> in, in class, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, just about so far, we've only just got a few minutes left. I mean, I, I, I was just sort of struck by it. I think it was um, I think it was something that Kevin said about changing management. Uh, it might have been Hassan actually. The, 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 uh, you know that actually these are big, big changes for companies, organisations to make, isn't it? They're, they're having to really shift their their whole thinking, and then that requires huge changes in management structures, thinking, etc. Uh, so these aren't easy, are they? The, 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 these challenges you're all three of you going to face in your career, they're not easy, are they? Actually, um, actually, like I, I believe like big changes start with small steps. Like, we cannot like uh, take a decision and flip the table upside down and change everything in the world and like easily uh, directly. You know, like personally, <clears throat> as a person that believes in evolution and natural selection, uh, if you if you look at this phenomenon, like it took millions and millions of years for uh, the, let's say, the humans to be like this, or the creatures to be like they are today. So 
<coughs> let's say every big achievement start with some baby steps and once you build one on top of the each other you will achieve what you want to achieve we cannot say like if this will take hundreds of years to be implemented that we don't do anything about it today because like if they thought about it 100 years ago when uh, the industrial, industrial revolution took place we would not face the climate change today and we will not do this for the next generation so even uh, it's clear that it will take time it takes too much effort we need to do a lot about it to, to make it happen but we have to start with it and uh, we should not like only think about our own benefit for our generation even if our generation will not <coughs> have the tangible aspect of uh, of these changes we have to do it for the next generations that they are coming after us Mikhem, you wanted to say something as well there. Yes. Um, so this is going to impact everybody in every sector. So the big corporations, the researchers, the external auditors, the accounting bodies, the regulators, and the employees. Everybody is going to have to, everybody has one question that hasn't been completely answered yet, which is what is the uniform unit of measurement to measure the impact of sustainability for a company. And I think at this point, we're all moving in the direction to find the answer. And it makes that change easier because it's happening collectively. Now, if it's better companies join now and go with that change and get there at the time where everybody had done things, gone back to the drawing board, figured it out, gone this route, okay, this regulator, my regulation might need a bit of tweaking, this policy might need a bit of tweaking. So I think it's it has started and it's moving and it's something that everybody, it's a collective effort to get to the point where we can say, okay, we have good clear cut units of measurements to measure the impact of sustainability for um, companies and then measure the commitments and see that these commitments are actually being ahead to. Okay. Jenny, did you want to come in there or? No, no. no, no okay, okay. I just, well, I'm just really inspired by the passion that I'm here uh, from these students. Yeah, I've me not too. I'm, heard I'm, all uh, of it, and it's know, amazing I'm, to hear. It's, it's uh, absolutely in my, I couldn't agree more. Um, the, our hour is almost up, I believe. I don't know where, where it went, but it, it, we're almost there. So, um, yeah, so thank yous. I want to, I want to thank uh, for Jenny for helping this session today that she helped us put on for uh, asking the students on our behalf. Um, really, really um, uh, thank you, Jenny, for the time you put into this 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 event today and to hear about what you're you're doing. Uh, can I thank all three of you, Hassan, Nikem, and Sean, for your 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 contributions? Uh, as Jenny says, it's really quite inspiring. The last hour, I don't know about about, about you. I, I feel. Uh, we're quite inspired by what you're saying and how, how things are changing so quickly and the, the views you have, the attitude, it's it's so refreshing to hear. So can I thank you all for, for contributing and getting involved? So really, 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 really appreciate that. And thank you to everybody who, who listened in. And uh, yeah, and if you want to sign up for any more of the events, do, 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 uh, do look on the festival website if there's any other sessions you want to, to join. Tomorrow is the last day, so it's your last chance to, to join some of the sessions. So. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very us. much. Thanks, Jim. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Okay. Thank Bye you now. so much. Bye. Bye now.